I will try to create a material, including an approval workflow. I will extend the material with an incompleteness workflow, and I will change the critical field, including approval. So first of all, here we have the application called from my Fury launch path, where I have a number of different apps available. So now I'm in the role of a requester on end user who wants to create a new material. Here I choose, uh, up here I have the, uh, the different buttons, create, change, display, extend. Have an embedded workflow inbox. I have a, if I want to maintain business partner, I can switch the business partner view. And then we have different action buttons here, cancel, save, delete, send request, which will occur or disappear depending on, or be high, uh, hidden depending on where I'm, I, am I in the process. We have some trace functionality here to, to trace the business rules to see if, if I'm wondering why was this value actually set for this list field. Then I can see, okay, which risk business rule did actually trigger that. We have a lock where I can turn write some internal comments for the next in line. If I have a process going from requester to finance department to an approval, for instance. Down here, we have an object type uh, section. Here I can choose between the different object types. Now I'll just choose materials here and then have the subtype. So in this case, it's pretty, pretty simple. It's in our global demo system, finished goods, but typically we see it's, <coughs> sorry, it's type of products, which are shown here. So it could be it's a vacuum cleaner or it's a scrubber dryer or these kind of products, but they're all, they're all finished products. Over here on the right side, we have the, the location IDs. So which in this case, in which plants am I creating it? And then we have a location ID, and then we derive what we call location type. So that's a level aggregation level on which I can build business rules, saying this rule applies for all production sites, as an example. Down here, we have various tabs, text, global, local, whatever. I'll go through this in a minute. If there's an asterisk, it's because I need to do some maintenance. We have mandatory fields I need to maintain. Um, these tabs, we can also have an authorization on so that I can say global days are only a few people in the organization are allowed to maintain those. And I can restrict that other actually can, they can see the data, but they might not be, or they will not be able to, um, to maintain them. So I will go through it here now and say, okay, I'd like to write a new text. This is a test five. And every time I'm done, the, the asterisk will disappear. Down here, if I take the uh, search help, these are the standard SAP search helps. There's no replication between SAP and the MBS application. It's simply an inside out approach. So everything I'm doing now, I'm working directly on the SAP database. I can jump with the tabs here, say 10, 11, 12, and dimensions. Enter here a weight of, let's say, seven kilogram. And uh, then over here, I also have profiles. So now I will trigger actually the batch management and critical path by choosing the critical path, and it will be set down here. Besides this, I have, in the way I've built the view is that I have columns. So I can have different columns. I have aggregation levels or grouping levels here with units of measure, weights, and these can be freely defined for a customer. So either we could do it like here, it's more like what kind of fields are we talking about, but it could also be that the name should see here in brackets, basic, that's the ownership. So who is responsible for maintaining this field? It is also seen, especially on the local tab. So alternative units, to be maintained, local data. Here we can see we have chosen to group people saying, okay, we have MRP, MRP fields, status related fields, some basic stuff, production related, sales, planning, finance, etc. Over here, we have the um, uh, source profile. Now I am creating a material in 1010. So if I say it needs to be sourced from 1010, it actually means that it's own produced. So if you look at procurement type here on the left, you will see that the, choosing a profile, we actually derive a number of fields. Planning, also set to make to stock, and we'll have the lot size uh, here. And if I change this planning profile, it will also update the fields linked to this planning profile. If I choose the ABC indicator here at BPC, and you can see those which are marked with the red asterisks. These are the 
mandatory fields. And then as explained before, I could also have what we call dependent mandatory fields. So for instance, if it's lot size, fixed lot size, I'll also be forced to maintain this field down here. Good. We support classification. Here we have already now derived because I chose that it's a batch managed product. So therefore I need to have batches in here. So I already assigned the class. So there's no risk that you will forget to assign a batch, batch class or that you intentionally actually assign a class which was incorrectly assigned. The same goes with the material class. And down here we have then two characteristics which are not mandatory for now, but basically these fields can also act as normal fields, meaning we can build rules, dependencies between different fields, et cetera. Then we have taxes, additional EAN, production version, et cetera. And on the dependency tab here, I have actually rules where it says child request to be created based on locations. So here I can derive dependent locations. So in this case, I will first create the product in 1010, but I will also try to extend it to 3710, 1110, and 1710. On the fields detail, we have a number of fields here, uh, which are automatically derived, and they are just for information only. They cannot be maintained, but they are all derived via the, um, via the uh, uh, business rules of ITMDS. Quality management. Again, here we have said this is a finished product, which we produce on our own. So I actually have said, okay, we need, well, we have an inspection type derived, in this case, 10. So if I deliver this to a customer, you need to trigger the uh, the inspection here in in the uh, in the uh, del during the delivery creation. And again, this is an example of where we, by means of these business rules, we can ensure that our data is consistent because this happens all the time. We have built the rule, so it's not dependent on whether it's me or Laura actually maintaining this. We have built the rule, so we know that this value is always uh, triggered. And this creates, of course, a, 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 a better data quality. Over here, we have the opportunity to build a, uh, to maintain a bill of material directly together with the material um, creation. It is often something we see in process industries or in life science, where you have multiple variants, for instance, say 10 liter paint, 25 liter paint, or 15 liter paints, et cetera. So basically, more or less the same product, but multiple different. Um, multiple different uh, variants. Link to document management system. The system tells me that approval is required. So in this case, I cannot send the request, but I will save the request. And if, what, what happens now is that there will be a workflow being triggered for an approval. In this case, I know it's a bit off, but I will actually add, act both as an approver and that in real life, this will never ever happen. But we need to, to push it a bit forward here. So the approval workflow here created, 152, says that it must be approved, tells me what kind of product it is. As approver, I can now go in and execute the workflow. I can look at the data. I can look at the lock. I can look at the request lock, who actually answered what. I can choose to reject the workflow, send it back to a person, say, dear Mrs. X or Mr. X, please correct the data to this and this, and then we'll go, go through the approval process again afterwards once data is requested or corrected, sorry. In this case, I would just choose to say, fine, 152, I will just create it. What happens now behind the scene is that I will create the material in plant 1010. Besides this, the system will try to extend it to the three other locations, so 3710, et cetera, in the background. So I'll send the request. The system now creates the material master in the background and tries to extend the um, and try to extend the uh, the product to the uh, to the other locations. Mm. If I'm a bit patient now and push the refresh, you can now see that we actually had here a 152, a incomplete request. This incomplete request goes to 3710 because it tells me that the MDS request is incomplete. So this is what we mean by decentralized maintenance. So if this, in this case, 
a group of people or one person will receive the workflow here. Um, and that is the person being responsible for the supply chain management fields in plant 3710. And that's a part of the project we map who, who should receive these workflows. You will then execute, he can then, or he or she can then execute the, uh, the, uh, the workflow. And then they are forced, once it's open here, they can go in and say, okay, it's local data we're missing to maintain. We have over here that with mark with bold that planning profile needs to be set. So we need to say, is, is, is it make to order or is, should it be treated as make to stock? In this case, we take make to uh, make to stock. And now the request is complete and the send request button is here. In this case, I've chosen not to have any approval step, but it could also be built in here saying, okay, we also need a local approval of the product. But that depends on the business processes of and requirements of the, of the customer. So next step I want to show you is what we call the change critical field, including approval. So here we can uh, go now to change mode. I'll say just 152. And you can now see on your own that it's been the product has been extended to these four locations. I'll just change it here. So what I will do now is that I will go to the global tab. I discovered that the weight actually need to be increased. It needs to be eight kilogram. And then the system tells me down here, okay, this is a critical field. Uh, approval is required. So I can't actually just send the request. If I changed some other fields which were not business critical, I could do the change do the update immediately. But since I have now assigned that net weight is a business critical field, it could also be product hierarchy for business partners, it could be bank data, it could be payment terms, then we will actually trigger an approval workflow. So we have a, a yeah, segregation of duty. So I can save the request and then I can again go to the workflow inbox. And here again, there will be a, an approval or critical field approval down here. Sorry for not sorting it right. I can actually see that what am I approving? Old value seven, new value uh, eight. So what I will do is that I will execute this. Again, same op options of rejecting, looking at the request change lock, what has actually been changed. In this case, I will approve it and send the request through. And then the, the first here, the update will take place in the uh, SAP backend system. 